Hey, so here's week two's homework. Right, so it's just about data representation. Now, first question looking at the first two is about representing text. So some computers represent text using codes such as Unicode. What's the advantage of representing text using Unicode? Well, hopefully you remember Unicode uses 16 bits for each character. That means you can represent many characters. Okay, if you wanted to actually know how many characters, you just go 2 to the power of 16 and feed that into a calculator. 2 to the power of 16. So you can actually represent 65,536 characters. So that's why a lot of countries are going down that route, okay? And why is Unicode becoming a standard rather than ASCII? Again, it's asking the same real question. ASCII is 2 to the power of 7, which is 128. So obviously, it's a lot more characters you can represent using Unicode rather than ASCII. So you can represent more characters than ASCII. So there's only a limited amount that you can actually ask about Unicode and ASCII. So if you know the kind of the fundamentals, you'll be fine. Hey, right, this one, you're converting decimal into binary. So I'll get this another wee sheet of paper that I can use for the working. So, okay, so the first one's 263. So we go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 64, 128, 256. Okay. So, so it's one more than your normal used to, right? So 256 goes into 6 or 263 once. Okay. What you're left with there is 7. Okay, so 7 plus 256, that's 263. That doesn't go into 7, here to 64, here to 32, 16 doesn't go into 7, 8 doesn't go, but 4 does, and you're left with 3, 2 goes into 3 once, left with 1, and 1 goes into 1 once. Okay, so if you add up all these, that should give you 263, so 256 plus 4 is 260, plus 2 is 262, 263. So that is your answer for that one. Okay, now if we look at, I'll just move it up. If we look at one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, this is the more conventional way because it's just going to be using eight bits. 64, one, two, eight. So, 1 to 8 doesn't go into 1, 2, 3, okay, but 64 does, so 1, 2, 3, minus 64, we're left with 59. Now the 32 goes into 59, 59 minus your 32, you're left with 27, okay, 16 goes into 27, and then you're left with 11. 8 goes into 27, you're left with 3. So 4 doesn't go into 3, but 2 goes into 3, you're left with 1, and 1 goes into 1. So that's your answer. So you would add these together, so just to, just to prove it, you've got 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1. Add them together, that gives you 1, 2, 3. Now, your next one is 199. Nine. And again, we just you'll get used to these and it'll be second nature. 16, 32, 64, 1 to 8. Okay. So, 1 to 8 goes into 199 once. And what you've got left. It's a hundred and so 
Should be able to do this off the top of my head. So yes. Got it back to front. Right, 71. Okay. 64 goes into 71 once. And what you've got left, 71 minus, minus 64, is 7. 32 doesn't go into 7. 16 doesn't go. 8 doesn't go. But 4 does. And then got a 2 and a 1. So 4, 2 and a 1 gives you your 7. So yeah, if you add these up, again, just double check. It's always better safer than sorry. That is 199. Okay, so that's your answer for 199. And your last one. 63. So these ones were actually quite tricky. Right, but again... We just do the same method as you've done for the rest of them. 64, 1 to 8. So 128 doesn't go in. 64 doesn't go in. 32 does. What's left? 16 does. 8 does. 4, 2, 1. And if you add these up, 32 plus 16. Plus 8, plus 4, plus 2, plus 1, that's your 63. Now, the reason why I could do this a lot quicker than other ones is if you're trying to get a number, a decimal number that's actually just one short from your placeholders, then it's just everything added together. Okay, so the ones before it are all ones, for instance. If I wanted to find 31, well, that's 16 plus. 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Okay, that's 31. So if it's a number that's just one away from either 1, 2, 8, 64, 32, etc., you just take all the numbers to the right and add them up. Okay, so that's why they're all ones. If that was 1, 2, 7 you wanted to find out, that would be a 1 as well. And if you added all them up, that would be 1, 2, 7. So again, that's us done these ones. It might be just worthwhile putting answers down. Right, just underneath it. So that's one one zero 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 one one one. That one's over there actually. Okay, the sixty-three is zero zero one 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 one. I'll just put this 263, that was your 9 bit one. 111, so that's 1, 5 zeros, 111, one, one. and 123 was 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so that was a 1, it's a 9 bit one. Okay, and I made a wee mistake there. Right, so that, that's your answers. Now, we want to convert these ones into from binary numbers into decimal. I'll we'll get another wee bit of paper. Right, so if I do 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8, 8. So for A, we have a 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And that equals, so that is 24, that's 25. Remember, if that's a 1, that's going to be an odd number. For B, we have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so we've got 64 plus 8, which is 72, and that equals 73. Okay, so 64 plus 72, that's plus 1. For C, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 64 plus 1 is 65, and then for D, again, they're just using 7 bits for each one, and they're all odd numbers because there's a 1 underneath, so 64 plus 32, okay, 
and that is 96 plus 1 and that equals 97 so your answers for these ones uh, and that's 25 that's 73 that's 65 and that is 97 okay so none of them are a bite exactly I'll straighten this up right so we've now got a situation in which they're asking about real numbers so that's when we have your mantissa times your base and exponent and what they've got here is they've got 24 bits for the mantissa 8 bits for the exponent if you reduce the mantissa and increase the exponent okay so remember your mantissa that's good for your accuracy and exponent is for your range. So the bigger Mantissa, the bigger the accuracy, or the greater the accuracy, or the precision, as you might hear, and the bigger the exponent, the greater the range. So if you reduce the Mantissa, we reduce the accuracy. But if we increase the exponent, we increase the range. Okay, so we reduce the mantissa, you're just reducing the accuracy and or you're increasing the range if you increase the exponent. And now this is a graphics question, so we worked a wee bit of this. Okay. Now what we'll do is just get another scrap piece of paper. This is this is one of the easier ones because it's a black and white picture. Okay. So what we've got here, and it's always good to just draw a wee diagram. Right, so we've got a picture, a six square inch black and white picture. Okay, and they're just calculating the amount of storage. Now, I'm not sure this is really applicable to it because they're actually giving you the size. So if we just draw this out, 640. By 480. So calculate the amount of storage required for a six square inch black and white picture with this number of pixels. Okay. I think it's probably best just to ignore that. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the number of pixels. Okay. So number of pixels. And that just equals the length and the height. So it's just the same as calculating the area of a rectangle. Okay, so what we've got is this equals 640 times 480. So 640 times 480, and that gives you 307,200 pixels. Now it's a black and white image so each pixel requires one bit. So number of bits so it's the exact same okay so it's 307,200 bits. Now that's a rather, a rather large number so what we'll do is we'll get this into a smaller number and a big, bigger unit. Okay, so if we divide by 8, so if you divide that by 8, we get 38400 bytes. Still, it's not a small enough number. So if we divide by 1024 and to get kilobytes. Okay, so divide by 1024. It's giving me this as a fraction, so I'll just and this is thirty seven point five kilobytes. So you've got it into a nice unit and a reasonable size number. So if you're getting an answer as big as that, certainly as big as this, then you're wanting to look to try and change the units to give you a reasonable size answer. And that's the end of your homework.